Eric, can you give us a brief overview of the latest uh, movements in Bitcoin price and what we should expect uh, in the short term future? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Bitcoin actually just did some pretty damn massive in the last uh, 24 hours or so. We got a pretty massive breakout out of this uh, $10,000 base right here. Really confirms this all as, uh, well, for the bears, a little bit of a bear trap. But more importantly, this whole consolidation right here is now being resolved to the upside. To me, this looks like this wants to trend. Um, and if we're going to start trending once again, I mean, this is, you know, this is the time to actually be paying attention as uh, Bitcoin's, you know, ready to move here. All higher time frames are kind of lining up with each other. You know, this whole price action right here over the last uh, five, six weeks, uh, about uh, about six weeks, um, that was that was just a nice, healthy uh, pullback after, you know, a long trending move. A lot of people looking at this as a reversal, a lot of people looking at this as likely to come further south. Um, no, this is actually now confirmed as, as 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 a very healthy consolidation, a bullish consolidation, and now being resolved to the upside. Any sort of a um, any sort of a closure on a higher time frame now above eleven five, which looks pretty damn likely, is going to uh, incite the next leg most likely. I mean, we're seeing all higher time frames line up with each other, and this is usually when I like to make my best trades. Um, looking at the daily right here, we regain the yellow twenty one exponential moon average. That's something that I was that I was watching for on my channel. Um, to kind of denote when the next trending move is going to emerge again. Um, and then on a lower time frame, kind of the big uh, hoopla with the last, um, what was it, like the last, uh, Jesus, a uh, couple of weeks of price action. We had this death cross go on in the four hour. This is the green 50 exponential moon average and the purple 200 exponential moon average right here. I'd actually gone through and uh, and documented all the different cases of death crosses and golden crosses on the four hour um, in dynamic markets. And uh, to the upside, these crosses typically last about two weeks. We're literally at the two week mark right now and it got golden crossed and uh, more importantly and some and some that i think the viewers might be a little more interested in hearing is that in an overall upwards market i've found that once the uh you know once you get the golden cross in the four hour uh usually you get about a 100 percent increase in price action literally a 2x within the next 100 to 120 days um in an overall upwards market which we certainly are in an overall upwards market right now so i kind of put these uh, these two things together and say hey um if we're resolving this consolidation to the upside and uh, and we're seeing all of these momentum oscillators and uh, and moving averages start to you know switch around to bullish once again. We're not just you know we're you know we're not just you know looking to the upside, but we're trending right now. And uh, I would be just looking generally for higher price in it, prices in Bitcoin. All higher time frames are are bullish right here. Uh, monthly had a phenomenal close um, just a few days ago uh, at the turn of August. And uh, to me, this is this is setting up to 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 actually push this guy and uh, legitimately, you know, before end of year, it's really not out of the question to be thinking about twenty thousand now. You know, I felt like a little bit of a moon boy saying that earlier, but um, this is really starting to shape up as uh, something quite constructive, and uh, I do feel quite strongly about that now. So uh, as I can see, you are pretty bullish about Bitcoin at the moment. So a prominent, another prominent uh, personality in the crypto space, uh, Max Kaiser, said that Bitcoin will reach uh, 15,000 this week, by the end of this week. Do you think it's a kind yeah. of realistic prediction? I, I think that's a little bit more um, YouTube algo inspired prediction. Uh, while I'm bullish on Bitcoin, I mean, um, you know, to say that Bitcoin is going to get to 15,000 this week, I think a little bit of a stretch. Uh, we've had a pretty nice move already, you know, a thousand bucks up from uh, from, you know, from this new weekly open. Um, while I do think that Bitcoin does get to 15,000 overall, I not I, I'm not so certain not say this week it's good to be a moon boy it's good to have a healthy amount of optimism but uh, that's it's getting a little bit on the outlier there don't get me wrong I do think that Bitcoin does work its way towards there but really um, when we're looking at these higher time frames as we just were we need to kind of incite of like a three to six month time frame for those sorts of moves not this probably not today or this week but hey you know and you know anything's possible with Bitcoin I would be looking there overall so uh, so the bottom line is is, you know, I, we're kind of on the same page, but time frames for that are definitely going to vary. Talking about the cause behind the latest uh, surge, some analysts say that uh, the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates in the US uh, mm -hmm. and therefore causing inflation to rise might have caused the latest surge in Bitcoin price. Other people pointed at the latest turmoils in Hong Kong and the devaluation of the Chinese yuan as uh, the main causes. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think? Are they the most possible reasons for Bitcoin uh, to surge? Yeah, there's I mean, there's really only one answer to this question. And there's one and it's the same answer 
to why price action ever moves ever. Why did price action go up? We have an imbalance of buyers and sellers, and there's more buyers right now. That's the only reason why it went up, really, at the end of the day. It's these reasons that we kind of look for to justify these moves after the fact, which you know just kind of assuage our, our need for logical follow-through on these. But at the end of the day, does it actually matter what the reason is? Not really. We have more buyers and sellers. And as you saw in the charts, you know, for the last five, six weeks, we had a we had a pretty healthy consolidation. You know, is that like what do people who say the, you know, inflation or sorry, you know, inflation rising or, you know, or the Chinese yuan being being responsible for this? What do they have to say about that? Right. Was it already priced in? No, of course not. Everything moves together. Right. But we can only really look at price action to begin with. So what's the real cause of the move? More buyers and sellers do do those sorts of economic events help out. Yes and no, because at the same point in time, you know, each and every market participants um, uh, uh, interpretation of those events can be subjective. We all kind of view reality through our own little lens. And while most people would probably look at that as a more positive thing, there's always going to be someone out there who's, you know, who could who could find another, you know, counterpoint to that. And uh, these sorts of, you know, events or sorry, these sorts of uh, reasons that come out after the past or sorry, after the uh, after the fact are typically just there for the retailers to kind of feel like, uh, oh, this makes sense. You know, I you know, I was, I was told just a few weeks ago that we're going to go down to uh, 7500 or 8500 by by so and so. Uh, and and and, you know, it didn't happen now. So I need a reason in order to feel right. And so that's where that kind of is born from. I'd say it's largely irrelevant. Um, at the end of the day, you know, gold, which I think Bitcoin is uh, commonly, you know, commonly compared to, you know, they're both commodities. Obviously, there's there's a lot of difference. Don't get me wrong, but just as like a working definition, both gold and Bitcoin, kind of in the same sort of uh, realm, if you want to, if you want to put it like that. And you see them both rallying off this sort of uh, this sort of event. So you do see that Bitcoin is acting as a commodity and kind of as potentially, uh, you know, we're starting to maybe see a little bit of it um, of it acting as a hedge against the traditional markets, maybe. Maybe as we do see traditional markets kind of turn down here and Bitcoin uh, trending to the upside once again. So I'd say that's pretty damn powerful. But we need to see this continue more um, more throughout the, uh, you know, just more throughout time in general, really. Uh, it's too early. We haven't really seen any major changes in behavior um, from both. That would lead me to believe that this is a long term trend just yet. Doesn't mean that it can't happen. But as far as like actual evidence in front of our face, we don't have that. Now, of course, you know, as Bitcoin, you know, as Bitcoin uh, enthusiasts, we all we are kind of looking for that to happen. But as of right now, has it actually, you know, gone down that way? Not necessarily. All right. So uh, talking about altcoins right now, one of the most uh, weighted uh, events of the week was the Litecoin halving. So mm -hmm. a lot of traders were actually following this upcoming event because they were expecting some upwards movement in Litecoin price, which actually failed to materialize. Were you actually expecting this outcome for the Litecoin halving? Yeah, the Litecoin halving is a very interesting thing. So uh, the past history has shown that actually leading up to the halving date, usually there's a pretty massive price increase. We saw Litecoin go from about 20 bucks to almost 150 bucks, I think it was. Um, that was what that was. And then usually when the event actually happens, well, it's already priced in, right? So what is everyone, well, the, what are the professionals doing? They're basically selling it to the, to the retailers who are now buying into it right now saying, oh, halving, good. And, uh, and now they have liquidity for that. Realistically, down the road, it is a positive thing. The trend has been in the past that, you know, longer term, yes, uh, ab you know, absolutely positive, uh, positive impact on price action, as you'd imagine, just because that is an actual fundamental type thing. Um, but the actual date of, like literally the second of, well, as you're seeing right now, Litecoin's certainly not leading the market, um, kind of following more than anything. But uh, I would expect that, you know, over time it does it does still benefit from that. It's just at the actual event, you know, you get event psychology, you get people selling into it just because they know that there's going to be buyers for it. And that's typically how those things go. And that's, you know, where that sort of uh, saying, you know, buy the, uh, buy the rumor, sell the news, you know, typically comes from. Cointelegraph, like, subscribe, and hodl.